going into the locator then, uh, we have a, a pretty standard shape till we get to this uh, 10 degrees. And I'm kind of thinking that um, we'll, we'll have to, uh, to figure out a way to, uh, to revolve cut that or it's going to end up being a loft. And I'm not quite sure I want to loft, but um, if that's what it comes down to, it, uh, we have the point nine three seven over here as the center, and then it just shows back uh, ten degrees. So if we can get the um, the revolve to work, that's going to be my first choice. And since I don't really have a lower radius over here on this angle, um, I'm still going to go with the uh, the revolve cut. So I jumped over into the uh, the earlier, and it wasn't uh, wasn't much better. It just showed that. Um, uh, we had an A dimension, and then I didn't quite, I picked up the 10 degree, oh, 15 sixteenths is 937, so that's where they got that. And, um, you know, they're kind of showing it as, as that geometry, but as long as I can pull a center line and do that revolve cut, maybe I can get it 180 degrees, I'm going to be okay with that. So, let's uh, get started on the geometry. I'm going to stay with the, um, the top profile. And then also when I looked at this, uh, the eighth inch by 45 degrees, well, to, to make that chamfer is still a round tool. Either it's a chamfer tool or a drill mill with a 45 degree angle, 90 degree included angle. And as I come up to that point where it shows the 0.75, that little bit of cup radius that they're showing, I need to include that. All right, so the eighth inch, this, uh, this will actually terminate at about 875. I'm going to add the, in the, um, uh, the width of the chamfer and have it terminate, and then we'll do another revolve cut to put that little scoop in. All right, so some of the geometries, I don't, you know, I don't know that I have to have that, but if it comes down to a clearance issue, then I want to try to pick that up. Oh, I should have flown that out so that I can follow the, uh, the dimensions. So part new. And let's go into the uh, the top plane for its orientation. Um, part symmetrical, so center line, infinite length. And we'll go horizontal, drop it on the origin. Uh, since this end has all of the uh, the fun stuff, I'm going to start the um, the part at the origin. Come over on the um, the angle, up a little ways, and. Then back to center. Now that 937, uh, that would give me a good starting point if I can, uh, I can pick it. So let's go ahead and do a center point arc. And I'll start at the, uh, the center line and then the center point drags through. And let's go ahead and get a few more dimensions on. I see all those blue lines and things are going to move around if I Get too crazy. So the width is uh, one inch nine nine nine. And then the um, the overall, since we're not really given point nine three seven. All right, so it pulls it back to that point. And then I have to kind of pull the arc in and don't want that relation. Still don't want that relation. All right, so there's a dimension of uh, 531, which is, so what, 1764 or something. So from the end to the center, 0.531. We'll see if that helps a little bit. Um, the angle is coming off to the center at 60 degrees. And it looks like it's going back to the um, to the start point, so we'll go with the center line, and I'll try to pick up the uh, the midpoint. And actually, it looks like um, it'll be about 60 degrees, so 60. All right, and then. On the other one, there was, uh, well, actually, it is still showing the eighth inch. So that's, um, that, that is a weird way to dimension that. Let me fly that back in. 
So eighth inch on the, the width of the arc, 062 centered across the, uh, the center line. This one had it too, where the 60 degrees came off, went to kind of the midpoint, showing a 16th and an eighth of an inch off of that line. So that being the case, I'm going to just drag that one back. And if I bring that one to center, well, those went fully defined. And that still didn't quite give me um, what I was looking for on the, uh, the outside. So let's do a quick uh, smart dimension. And nope, I got the angle. So 148. So there's that over-defining condition or it can't solve condition. So since I told it it was a midpoint and went to 148, well, that's another one of those uh, dress it with a file until it looks good. I don't know how to, uh, if I want to stay with um, the 937 number or the eighth inch number is more critical. All right, so that went three quarters back. That looks like the um, the A value, a little bit back from the A value, and three quarters. So still don't really have a terminating uh, terminating feature. So we just need to come up with a number then and see what it uh, what it falls out at. Okay, so from the, uh, the nose back, let's see what um, 5 eighths looks like. Okay, so if I go in, let's go ahead and trim. And we'll trim out those two points. All right, so here's one of the, the things that we would um, we do. I want to be aware of this number or keep track of that number. So when it pops up and it says make this dimension driven, if driven it's not solvable, then we go just go ahead and hit OK. Notice that the extension lines are in a lighter gray. And if I try to modify it, it's going to tell me, nope, it's a driven dimension. You can't do anything with it. So it gives it to me. It's not really a reference dimension, but I can, uh, you know, as a driven dimension, it, it has kind of a different connotation, but um, I can use it as a reference dimension. All right, so that tells me that uh, I'm, what, uh, 23 thousandths wider than uh, what we had uh, previously. So we'll have to see where that, uh, that falls out. All right, so if I select the chain, and that is a right click on any of the entities, select chain, and then I'll control select the one center line and mirror entities. That gives me my region. Okay, so I have the majority of the geometry. Still not quite sure what's going on here, but I think it's going to be close enough. We go ahead and extrude that out, and the thickness ends up being um, 749. Double check it, 749 to 748. And it doesn't, uh, shouldn't really matter. Well, maybe it does matter. If I'm going to do that revolve, I want to come off of that... Um, that sketch with my plane and then probably be easier to make that the top plane. So we'll reverse it and go 749. Okay, so that gives the other uh, shape. Since I'm focusing so hard on this um, on this endpoint uh, or these uh, these radiuses anyway, I'm going to expand out so the little arrow underneath expands out to where I can see the sketch. We'll right click and hit show then now I have that sketch available to uh, to look at and we need to, uh, to generate a, pl a plane through uh, through a couple of points so we'll go into reference geometry and plane there it comes and so the first reference actually that looks pretty good coincident too and it's staying perpendicular to the uh, to the top plane so I don't know that I need to define that anymore. So let's go ahead and see if it will accept it. All right, input is incomplete. It wants at least one more datum reference. So if I were to go to the top plane and make it perpendicular, that finishes out the, uh, says fully defined, that finishes out for that plane. All right, so when I open up the sketch, 
and we go to the center line. I'm going to pick the center line to be coincident with the um, with the center of the um, uh, the center of the uh, the arc, and then I'm going to set the 10 degrees. And I don't know where those are terminating just yet. All right, so here's a good place to use that four-headed arrow where I can select the endpoint, select the line, select the direction, place the dimension in between, and go to 10 degrees. All right, so I'll go Control-8, Normal-2, and we'll just tie those to the, uh, to the bottom of the part. <coughs> All right, so if this works, I can go directly into the feature, and we're going to make a revolve cut. And no, I don't want to close it. And I'm not going to go uh, 360 degrees. Since we're 60 degrees this way, let's see, blind uh, in condition, I want to go 10 degrees at least uh, one way. And we'll reverse the direction. So actually, let's see, we're 60 degrees, probably should go 30. That'll bring it out planar. And then direction 2 would be 150. All right, so what I'm trying to do by uh, making that sweep is still get a 180 degree cut. And I said sweep, I mean meant revolve. So by getting that revolve is it's always going to intersect my geometry. I'm not going to run out of geometry. All right, because it's, uh, oh, it went to a thin feature. Hmm. Um, no. All right, so since it went to the to the thin feature, it's uh, it's going to put up the good fight, and I'm not getting a direction arrow or uh, flip side to cut on anything. Then we're going to have to go back and close it off. All right, so the thin feature is trying to take a swipe, and I would hesitate to just tell it, oh, it's a quarter inch thick. I'd rather define just go ahead and define it than give it some thickness that is kind of an arbitrary thickness. Mainly, I, I don't trust it. <laughs> so if I bring this over and close off the triangle, as long as it can intersect the rest of the geometry, I won't end up with any um, extra bodies or zero thickness geometry. Then we'll go ahead with the other uh, revolve cut. We're going 30 degrees one direction, reverse, and then 150 the other, and we'll see what that looks like. All right, still ended up with bodies. All right, so bodies to keep. If we go to selected bodies, and it's not letting me rotate, so let's see what it picks up. So there is just a sliver and just a sliver. All right, so it didn't quite um, complete as expected. So one more pass at it. So this can stay as a construction line. And I'm going to end up giving it that uh, kind of that arbitrary thickness anyway. Uh, come out some distance. And then we try one more time because that will make the, um, the full cut. What was the problem with doing that in the first place? Uh, the thin feature is um, uh, this so other. It's not a, a specific distance that you know is you know how to make. Yeah. Uh, just did, you know, kind of a guess that um, uh, I don't know until I get that that window that says bodies to keep, and then it's showing me that there is just a sliver where it can't calculate or it calculates that there's something left, and I don't want it to generate those geometries. So to extend it out certain distance and make sure that it uh, it cleans up, that's that's kind of the where the solution comes in. All right, so one more time. And that gives it the transition. So really, um, I look at how, how that's defined, and I think, yeah, I'm probably walking over to the bench grinder and going to go, <laughs> set my, uh, set my uh, platform to 10 degrees and make it look good. And I'll scribe a little line there, and you know, it's going to be by hand. Otherwise, we're making a tool or a fixture to set that up, and I don't know. Maybe I'm being a little too optimistic. So going back through, we're going to right-click and hide the sketch, hide the plane, and then that puts it back to where we're just dealing with uh, the slot geometry and the end geometry. 
Um, okay, so going to the 5 8 uh, 625 bottom tells me that it is a flat bottom. The drill point might go into the slot or probably would go into the slot on the depth. So in that case, we would take a, an end mill, uh, maybe drill a pilot hole to uh, 1.125 depth. You know, so, um, uh, you know, 590 or something to, to open it up. And then we'd come back with an end mill and just plunge the end mill to get the bottoming um, in place. So that one's not going to be a whole fe feature item or a whole wizard item. We'll go normal too. And it is 375 off of the, uh, the bottom. So open up the sketch on center line. So select, control select. And then. Um, Let's, uh, let's undo that real quick. So for future reference, under the display delete relations, you also have add relation. And then the one I cringe to show you is fully defined sketch. So forget that that one's there. <laughs> um, there are places where imported geometry, imported drawings, uh, nice to get all the dimensions on. But until you understand the process of applying the dimensions, applying the relations, I would say stay away from the fully defined sketch. It'll probably create more problems than it's worth. But in the case of the add relation, then I can select the uh, the origin, select, and I'm not having to do any control, control select items. So that goes to vertical, and then it push pins, so it'll stay until I either accept it or I'm you know, through adding relations and um, build in the rest of the geometry. Okay, so 0.625. Uh, that is kind of big in relation to 0.375 for the dimensions. And then we have a depth going to 1.125. Okay, so that gives me the, uh, the geometry. Uh, let's see, we have uh, two slots. Let's go with, uh, let's see, are they the same slot would be a good question. Go ahead and fly it in and take a look. Um, so that one's it's like 312. So where the earlier is going to be uh, a little better. 5 8 looks like overall. Yep. Not called out on the second, so the assumption is they're the same slot. All right, so that helps and, and hurts because I want to show you both slots. So we'll go ahead and hit the uh, the sketch. And under our sketch to um, uh, sketch commands we have the straight slot, the center point straight slot, the three point arc slot, and the center point arc slot. So you can draw whatever combinations there. Straight slot, in point, in point, I'll go with uh, first. And so you draw that center line, and then when you drag out, that's going to be the size of the slot. Okay, and then because we were given 625 as an overall, the 5 eighths, I'm going to go arc to arc and place the dimension. I don't really care what the dimension is because I'm going to change this on the leaders and go to max condition, max condition. If you select center points, so center point to center point or the length of the line, you get to do the math. It's not going to let you go to that max, max condition. It only works with the arc geometry. Oh, and I didn't really want the increment, so nope. <laughs> 0.625, and then the um, the width was 13 30 seconds. Now let's go back to the other one. So that one had uh, had 203, so that would be 406. All right, we're going to try the 13 30 seconds and see what it comes up with. 13 divided by 32, 406. How about that? All right, and then it's um, to the uh, to the center, I believe. So we have that center point uh, available to us. We'll utilize it 1.75. All right, so fully defined feature extrude cut, and let it go through all. All right, so normally I would go ahead and copy that slot over, making it equal, and just picking up a a new location. Or I would draw another slot and set the slots to equal. Um, but I want to try the uh, the whole wizard. 
because it has a slot geometry. All right, so fractional drill sizes. And then we'll go to 1330 seconds. The slot length then, well, that's still center to center, I think. So let's try it, 0.625. In condition is through all. And no near side or far side countersink. And then we'll position it. All right, so going to the, uh, to the hole wizard, it went 625 is an overall length, so okay. I'm kind of buying that. Uh, we will relate it to the origin as horizontal, so I need to get that one out of the way. And then our dimension, uh, let's see, is that a chain dimension? Yeah, three inches off of the previous. So I don't have anything there to select just yet. We're going to expand out the, uh, the flyout. Go to cut extrude one, no, two, and can't show just there. So let's see if we can get this to show somewhere. And if I expand out, well, that just got complicated. <laughs> expand out the, uh, the flyout. There is the sketch. And when I right click, I'm still not, uh, not seeing the hide show, the little eyeball. So expanding out the, uh, the view, the display, then I can activate it. So it's kind of a long way around. I just wish I'd remembered to, to just show it before. We put from center to center three inches, and that sets the definition. All right, so it's still in blue, which means that more than likely it can rotate. So in that case, we're going to select the center line, and I will double click on the little dot, bring it up, go horizontal. Now I have a fully defined hole wizard. All right, so 1330 seconds, 406 diameter slot. A little bit different in the geometry. I haven't used uh, the whole wizard very much, so now we'll go back and hide, or I can do the, uh, the fly out and click on the button again. So kind of interesting. Um, going into that, uh, that chamfer, all right, so the eighth inch by 45 degree chamfer both sides. I don't think that I can um, I can just use the chamfer tool, right? Because if I pick that edge, it's going to put along the whole edge. So this is one of those uh, those cases. Well, let's go ahead and see. So since it picks the entire edge, we go into a chamfer, um, have different faces, fillets, directions, but no depth. Um, let's go under options. Nope. Select through faces, keep features. Still no depth. It's going to go the entire length regardless. All right. So not going to be able to use the chamfer tool there. We're going to go with just some, uh, some standard, um, triangles. All right. So since they're symmetrical, we'll put in the, uh, the center line. L key for the, um, put me back into line. Your choice to put in the uh, the angle or to make the uh, the two legs equal, and then we will set one of those to eighth of an inch. Okay, right click and select chain. Control select the um, the center line and go mirror. And then uh, we said that um, it was listed as six and a half deep or 0.75 back. Yeah, that's still the same math. So um, let's go with the uh, 6.375. All right, so extrude cut. All right, so again, taking the um, the depth of the, of the chamfer and subtracting it off the length or in this case, or in the other case was adding it to the 0.75 should give me the same number. All right. So that goes to depth. It stops short. And then to make those little cup reliefs, which is how we're going to manufacture, unless we set this up each part on an angle and ran down that, uh, that angle and stopped and went back and forth to alleviate the arc. I don't know that that's my best manufacturing process. Then I will convert the entities. 
and the, let's see, go control eight. And this is going to be a revolve cut. I'm not going to be able to do both of them at the same time. And since I didn't put in a center line, then I have to select which item I want to do the revolve. And I don't really care that it's 360 degrees. Okay, so that gives it that little, little scoop. Like we took a 45 degree chamfer tool, ran down, and stopped. And the advantage on the manufacturing end is that I can hold this in a vise uh, along the, uh, the direction and make one cut, come back, make the other cut, and I don't have to do anything special on the, uh, the setup. Okay, so one more, open up the sketch, convert the entities, features, revolve cut, axis of revolution, finished. All right, so let's go ahead and save that and watch where it goes to because the my design, since we were working with the, uh, the countersink last time, is it wanted to go back there. And this was item four, the locator. All right, so while that's saving, let's go ahead and take a look at the body. So the body has a lot of geometry. It's really not that complicated, but one of the, uh, the choices so far we've been pick up a sketch, if we can do a, um, uh, a shared sketch and reuse that geometry, then we've, we've, done, um, uh, we've done that in several instances. And something like this where you just look at it and go, wow, that's kind of complicated, that's kind of ugly, that's more than I really wanted to get into, then this really lends itself to a layout sketch. We draw one sketch, it doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be pretty, it has to have locations and all of our existing geometry. The intent is that that layout sketch will provide a, a basis, a scaffold for the rest of the geometry, but not be consumed by the geometry. We'll convert entities, we'll trace over top of it, we'll do everything but use it to make a, uh, make a feature. So to that end, I'm gonna start off with just the envelope or my calculated envelope, and I'll start putting in lines and, and uh, geometry at the various dimensions to pull in the, uh, the shapes and the critical, um, the critical points. And then we'll see how it goes, see if that's a good decision or not. All right, so through with the locator, new part inch. All right, so this thing's pretty good size, and that also lends itself to the, um, uh, to the selection. So my envelope then, is going to be 24.875 and the uh, the overall height was 8.875 plus the one inch radius so that puts it out at 9.875 alright so that is the entire volume of the uh, the front view of the part okay so things like the uh, the intersection of the, uh, the radius and I'm not so concerned about center lines just yet. I may go back and convert some of these, but for the most part, we have the uh, the one inch to the radius. Uh, we're going to end up with a four and a half. Okay, so that'll be the intersection of the circle. And so those two circles kind of end up like that. And the ID, let's see if it calls that out. We've got the one inch radius to the outside, and then it looks like a thread. No. That gives the boss 1875 and 188. I think that's to the boss. All right, time to fly it in and see what we're looking at. All right, so nothing really on this side. So unless that's a, uh, a countersink or a relief on one side. Oh, and then the boss is just on the outside. Okay, so that kind of explains that one being raised. All right, looks like the through hole. Except that doesn't quite look as, um, as big, especially, well, okay, one and three sixteenths and going to two inch. All right. I, I'm, I'm a little better, uh, I'm a little more okay with that, so 
Maximum material condition, smaller number, 1.1875, and we're only talking about half a thousandth. Um, so definitely a ream into uh, to position, 1875. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And I don't know that I'm worried about that boss just yet, so we're going to go on to the next piece of, um, of geometry. All right, so the angles come off tangent. So if I pick the circle, that's going to put me into tangency. And I can come off at my first angle, pick the, uh, the second circle, and come off at the next angle. All right, and I'm not sure where the, the top one's um, falling out at, but the lower one is 5.5. All right, so the intent here again is just to put in as much information as I can glean from the drawing and uh, start to, uh, to sort this out. Okay, so I know that there's a line here, although I don't know where exactly it's um, uh, going to be positioned just yet. All right, so this one can go to 6.625. And that was to the lower base. Let's see. If I kind of project that over, that sort of looks like uh, the transition for the uh, for the step. So I'm going to go with that. So 5.5 up, 5.5 down. That's an interesting way to do the do the dimensioning. And we'll see what that looks like. All right, so already starting to get a bunch of dimensions. We'll pull some of these out to uh, to help clarify. All right, so that gives me kind of the um, the end shape. Uh, let's see to the center. Now, was that to the uh, to the hole, or is that on the opposite side? I think that uh, that through hole is on the the other end. So one and a half off of the uh, the base. About this point, I feel my, like I'm uh, painting myself into a pretty good corner. But we'll keep adding geometry and see what uh, what comes out of it. All right. So to the top of the boss on this end, let's fly in one more time. Uh, 675 and then uh, eighth inch. I don't know that I, I care so much about the uh, the small boss. Uh, the 425 and the 675, the 0.75, yeah, I'm pretty good with those. So we fly out. And I don't know that I want that to go all the way across just like I didn't really do too much there. So maybe that one goes vertical. And then we bring that one over. And so I can go 425. And then it has a height of 6.625, so the 6.75 minus the eighth of an inch. So if I want to do that math, 6.75 minus 0.125 gives me a resulting number. If I can recognize those fractions in my head, though, I'm going to try and do those numbers because it's going to speed, speed things up a little bit. Oh, and that 425 did not include the little step. So there's that three-quarter inch step over here. And I don't have a dimension on that side just yet. 0.75 to center line. But that doesn't mean it's an inch and a half either. So, all right. But I'm going to add in the inch and a half until I find a, a number to verify. And we'll go 0.75. Or sorry, one and a half. All right, so since that will probably end up confusing me, this is one of those places that I will try it, but I'm not uh, real high on expectations. If I grab the uh, the grip and drag from endpoint to endpoint, I can move an extension line. Um, I don't do that enough. You know, most of the time my dimensions are are there. Um, and if I had any kind of problems with it, I would not hesitate to delete that dimension and reapply it. All right, so since it worked, yay, but move on. <laughs> All 
All right, so the inch and a half, like I said, I'm not real sure about that, but it gave me a 0 0.75 to, uh, to depth. Uh, let's see, where was that? 0 0.75, kind of on the center line, so it's not a safe assumption that that uh, edge is one and a half. Um, I would much rather verify that. And being the case, let's go over and see if we can, uh, can find the part. I think it was up a page or two. So that's the opposite end. And we have some thicknesses. Have our geometry. About the, about the same. All right, and if there was a CL there for the, uh, for the center line, yeah, I'd kind of buy that. So they went from three to two. Oh, that's a much more interesting shape. So let's not do that. <laughs> oh, there it is. Yeah, same shape. Never mind. All right. So we've got uh, got most of that geometry in. So the one and a half, and then the bottom of the body will be offset. Hmm. All right. So then that next uh, next step for the uh, the geometry. We have the uh, the 30 degrees, and then that shape ends up being off of the uh, the tangencies. So I almost need to draw that uh, in the uh, the top view and come back to it. All right. So from the center over is a three and a half. I think I will make that one a center line. Okay, so that's to the center center hole, and then the uh, the rest of the geometry comes off of that location. Let's see, do we have a height? Um, there's a 1.176 off of something. Oh, that's coming off of the um, the whole center line over here that we haven't put in yet. All right, so 1875. Yeah, this just got way more complicated. <laughs> All right, so 4.312, 4 and 5 sixteenths is to the, the whole center line. And then we come back from, from that center line and then that the top of that boss uh, comes in at the um, uh, 1.176, 1.175. It's a crazy way to do the, uh, the dimensioning on that. All right, so I'll put in the uh, the line. And again, I'm more concerned about the uh, the visual being able to see this than I am about making it um, making it perfect. So maximum material condition be 1.175, and then I'm not sure where the 30 degrees starts, so kind of just comes off of uh, off of that point. But I would need the point where it terminates. Maybe I can do that. Uh, one point. Um, 312, does that come off of? Mm, can't quite tell if that comes off of uh, the center or off the edge. I think it's offset. Yeah, I'm going to get myself into trouble on that one if I uh, take on the 30 degree. All right. So that gives enough to, to start. I'm not really concerned with the uh, the thicknesses for the casting. Uh, probably the other one then would be since uh, the radius is off of center line. Let's go with a uh, center point arc, and then we'll kind of start out here somewhere. I don't like the direction, so I'm going to keep going. And I have to be careful. Notice that it picked up that midpoint. I really didn't want that midpoint. So we're going to highlight it, delete it, 
and then we can set our dimension. So smart dimension for the radius is three inches and its location I thought I saw one seven seven point five from that one. Wow, chain dimensions all over the place. All right, so we'll see where that if that falls out. Okay, so that comes back that way. Even though I didn't want the midpoint, I do want it to be coincident. And then for its vertical orientation. I believe it's going to be to the center line of that hole again, so make one set. Oh, it's quite a bit smaller than theirs. <laughs> All right, so we'll have to, uh, to chase that math uh, later. All right, so that gives me the, uh, the layout, at least the, uh, the start. All right, so the, um, the bottom then. We have to, uh, to make a decision, so maybe this is the layout front. And, you know, kind of the, the thought is, um, would I do this as a 3D sketch? And based on the complexity, no. Well, I would rather have three individual sketches, the, the layout front, the layout right, and the layout uh, top. Uh, rather than try to manage this in that 3D environment. So I tell everybody to wait on the 3D sketches for uh, for good reason. But as part of the strategy, it's a question that uh, that gets posed. So I'm going to go back into the, uh, the top plane. And then there are going to be some things that I can relate to. So we pick the line, we pick the origin. That can be the midpoint. We had a thickness of four and uh, a half. So I'll go ahead and put that in. And we've already kind of built in some of the parent child, so I'm not going to do anything that would, um, so that I'm going to be able to drive geometry in the layout. All of this is geared towards being able to uh, generate the the geometry as we go through and build the features and build the uh, build the solids. <clears throat> All right, so looking at this from the top, there is the um, the one inch hole at location, so I can use that front geometry and maximum material condition point. Nine 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 five, and then I'm going to start to to try and decipher the um, the radiuses. All right, so this one came down at the um, at the edge, so I'll put a line across, and I'm kind of staying in the ice uh, sort of a rotated isometric, just so I have better visibility. And instead of midpoint, I'm going to go with coincident. All right, the 1.312. Now, I want to say that looks like a slot, so let's just go with the slot and see what happens. And since they're both radius 1.312, that'll give it to the start. Uh, looks like it's showing center of 0.75, so in this case I would go to the center line. And then, okay, now I'm kind of seeing it. Let's go ahead and pull this up. 0.25 to the uh, to the start. No, nope. that's got to be... That's going to be offset from the uh, from the center. And if that's the center of the slot, okay, we can do that. But it doesn't really look centered, so... Uh, 1.312. And then the fun tapped hole off of the off of the side of it. I don't know that I'm going to get any better information zooming up on it. But if that radius is the end, 
and the 0.75 is to the slot, then we'll go with it, see what happens. All right, so still in smart dimension from the hole to the center point, 0.25. And did not want that to intersect. <laughs> All right, so to be determined. Okay, so 3.5 to the center of the hole. And then 0.25 brings it over. But that's neither to the... All right, then I'm not sure what the 0.25 is for. All right, so I'm going to go back with the original assumption, get rid of that dimension, and drop that in point. So if nothing else, it looks better, and we'll have to figure out what the 0.25 was for. <laughs> okay, so we have that geometry. And again, kind of hard to tell if it's a... Um, if it's coming off tangent, but I can't really make the the assumption that the uh, the angles that are being shown, all right, again in the bottom view, coming off of that point, coming back, 30 degrees is off of the uh, the face. It almost like looks like it comes into contact, um, but I would uh, I would think tangency before I would uh, think anything else. So pick the circle, bring it back to the point, and then pick the circle, bring it back to the point. All right, so something missed. So since it's still in blue, we got coincident, but because it pulls off of the arc, we're going to go back, select, control, select, and pick tangency. Select, control, select, tangency. All right, so some complicated little uh, little geometry right there just to uh, to get to that point of the uh, the angle. All right, so still not sure what's going on with um, the relief. Wait, so, yes. We're looking at it, and it said that 0.25 that you were looking at. It yeah. It's coming from the center point of the circle, and then moving over to the right. Yeah, but you I... did that 0.25 and move the whole shape over to the left. And then when it make it move over to the right, because it's I mean, your, your, uh, your little slot there is touching Directly to that line. Right, and, and moving it back to the center pulled it pulled a little bit of a gap. Um, but yeah, without knowing what the 0.25 is really related to, um, I'm kind of taking my best guess. So we've got more of a gap, at least it's not overlapping at this point. So we'll kind of build out from there. So as you're going through this, this is complicated enough. And I'm, you know, I'm not going to go through and nitpick every dimension. I'm looking for you've got the major uh, pieces of geometry and got everything kind of in its place. Um, if I can't decipher it, I'm not expecting you to. All right, so we'll take our best guesses at it. If you find a better way or better information, build it in, and we'll take a look at it. Uh, let's see. So there's um, kind of a, a cavity. Yeah, got the um, the relief, and I don't know that I want to do that as a shell. All right, so doing all of this relief, I'm thinking that that is not as complicated until we get to the through holes, and they want to bring those down to a point, so those will be an overlap. So I guess the hole locations go in, and maybe that'll help out. Well, 2.625, and then... Okay, that brings it over to the next. So I can kind of see why they did the chain dimensions, but it drives me crazy going uh, going back through it. All right, so we're going to have some hole locations. That will be uh, 2.625 from that center. I'll just go ahead and put those in since it's already getting busy enough. 
and I didn't put in a center line for my symmetry. So maybe I'll do that now. Center line, horizontal, infinite length, drop it on the origin. And then I can just make those two circles symmetric. And the through hole is a, no, the outside is a radius of 0.625. I'm not worried about that one. Okay, the three holes are looking like 0.5. Okay, so three holes on the end are 0.5, and then I think we're going to leave all of them at 0.5 until we uh, pick something out there. Let's go with the, uh, the 0.75, again, kind of making the assumption that that wall thickness for the, uh, for the casting will stay at, uh, at the 0.75 number. So I have the, um, the center line, and I'm going to put in that 0.75 center. And I'll go ahead with the, uh, the second one, because I don't really want to mirror those. Mirroring center lines has, uh, has its share of issues. So if I make that coincident, then to keep these in the same location, I'll just pick its endpoints and make the endpoints symmetrical so that they share the same dimension. All right. So, let's see, we can kind of see what's left of the, uh, the relief. I don't want to get into those just yet. What's my next uh, critical piece of geometry? All right, so this steps up and over as it comes in. Okay, so I'm thinking uh, that 0.75 at the end. Okay. And then one at the intersection. One at the intersection. Also the midpoint. One at the intersection. And then I'm going to keep all of those equal by setting them to whichever one has the dimension on it. So 0.5. Okay, so another critical dimension that's called out is the 1.25. Oh, I guess I put a comment in even though I didn't <laughs> mean to. Um, okay, Control Z works on Adobe. All right, so 1.375. Uh, from the center of the hole, 11.875. Now, why would they bring that to the edge? And then off of the edge, it goes 1.375, which is the half dimension of the 2.75, which I'm okay with. All right, well, that being the case, we'll stay with the numbers. So another line goes in from the uh, the whole center out to the line. 11.875. Oh, I guess that one will either prove or disprove the inch and a half theory. So since this one goes to 2.75, Unless I have a fairly large radius, no. 2.75, oh, that's, that makes it even better. So if I project that line down for the 2.75, and actually that is the interior pocket, 2.75 plus another 0.75 for the wall thickness. All right. Going to hand this one off to the uh, blueprint reading class. All right, so 0.75. Okay, which one did I pick? Here we go. 0.75. All right, and that looks pretty close to where the um, the endpoint came down. So we can kind of verify that that line is in the correct position now. 
although not my I mean, necessarily my favorite way to do it, but um, we do have at least that much visual verification. And then the 0.75, that kind of blocks that in, that blocks that in. 1.375 back then. Yeah. We're still getting uh, a lot of uh, a lot of lines, a lot of geometry. All right, so that gives me a center point for the through hole, which is 1.25 to 1.251. So find that location, 1.25, maximum material condition. All right. So I don't think we have enough, but we have enough to get started. I would like to go ahead with the uh, layout on the right. So I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, uh, let's see, layout top. And then conveniently enough, the right plane's right there. So... I will just put in a placeholder sketch for now, since we're going to um, need to do some of this in, uh, for, for lab, leave some lab time. And we'll make those coincident. Where was that, uh, that one critical um, hole location? That was at the 4.312. So if we read that one right, um, two holes through. Well, that assumed that it was a, a through hole, too. Okay. Still don't know if I have enough information. We'll go ahead and accept. And I'll have a layout for the, uh, for the right. All right. So since I want to get started building some of this, and the right is going to be critical on the interior geometry, what I'm looking for is just to kind of build this out where we can, uh, where we can get it started. And then we'll remove some of uh, some of that additional material. So I have this point now. If I can uh, build it into my sketch, I can determine where that 30 degree angle comes down. And even though it won't be in the, uh, the layout, I have enough information to, uh, to to start to figure some of that out. So the right, I'm not worried about. There's not anything in there. We'll go back into the front plane. And our choices are to sketch over top. So line to line, to tangent arc, to line, and then we're going to be back down to that height, which was the top of the boss. Yeah, and then it still had that relief, so I'm not real, I'm going to say I'm real fond of doing it that way, but we'll get it started. All right, so I want the 30 degree in place. All right, and the end of this uh, this geometry, so this point, didn't like that one. All right, so if I'm going to do that, let's go ahead and get this geometry into that plane. So a vertical relation pulls it back. And we get a, um, a pierce, which I'm okay with, because this is perpendicular to the plane that I'm sketching in. Um, I'll accept the pierce, which just says that this line will, will intersect. And let's go ahead and generate the, uh, the one more. All right, so that should be 0.75 to there, since that was the interior box. And go ahead and escape. All right, so up to this point, I've been tracing, which is probably my, my preference because I have all that extra geometry. But if you decide to convert, uh, no, it's not going to be that one. It's going to be that one, that one, and that one. Keep in mind that with convert, it shows you that all of the endpoints are in black, that they're defined. But notice I can grab those endpoints and drag them because they are on edge references. They're not necessarily 100% defined. All right, so I can manipulate those a little bit and then go ahead and complete out the, um, the, the profile and close it in to create the region. All right, so if I've done all of that right, now instead of giving this, uh, this boss extrude feature a value, 
I'm going to use the top layout, which has dimensions in it already, to create my shape. All right, extruded boss, and my end condition is up to vertex. And the vertex will be the, the top sketch, point one at layout top, direction two will be up to vertex, and point three. That gives me the thickness of the outside shape. So it doesn't look like much. In fact, that's still kind of ugly <laughs> considering that we have a, have a ways to go for the, uh, for the geometry. Uh, but that's a, a pretty good start for the, for the amount of complexity that we're having to deal with. So we'll go back and, uh, next time we'll complete out the, uh, the right plane. Uh, let's see. One more would be kind of, uh, your choice if you wanted to open up a sketch on the, the outside face, convert the entities. You know, so the circles are going to be pretty straightforward and then do an extrude cut and this one can stay through all. All right, so that gives us one, one more to start with. And so then like the one inch and the one and an eighth inch or whatever that was, we could go ahead and go through, but there's all of that cavity geometry underneath the casting that I don't want to get into just yet. So. What that does then is the layouts are my scaffolding, my, my um, uh, skeleton for all of the geometry. And as much as I can drive that geometry, uh, all of the dimensions will be in those layouts, or the majority of the dimensions will be in those layouts. And then when I bring it down to the boss, if there's an issue or an error, I go back, I kind of trace back to what it's being related to and I go into that uh, that layout to make corrections. All right, so we'll call that one good and take questions in the lab.